Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 2nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Zoners Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Brussels, Belgium. Ahead of the weekend, Google came out with a set of blog posts with details regarding a years-long attack against iPhone users. Now, these attacks were targeted in the sense that the exploit code was deposited on very specific websites. Google doesn't mention these websites, but they categorize it as a waterhole attack, which typically means that the website being affected with the malicious code here is typically targeting or catering a particular community. But any user visiting this website was then infected by the malicious code if their phone was vulnerable. Now, typically when we talk about mobile malware, and I have talked a couple times last week about Android malware, for example, we talk about malware that a user specifically installs, not knowing that what they're installing turns out to be malware. These exploits are different. These are these more dangerous drive-by exploits where a user visits a website that is infected with the malicious code and then as a result, Salt malicious code is installed on the user's phone. So if done right, then the user doesn't really have any idea what's happening or that the phone is infected at all. These exploits, of course, are a bit more complicated and typically actually require a set of exploits or an exploit chain to be successful. In this particular case, the initial exploit, of course, was targeting the Safari web browser. So the user visits the malicious website. There is specific JavaScript typically being running on on that website that triggers the vulnerability. And then this vulnerability is used to execute arbitrary code. In this case, at first, using the limited access restrictions that Safari has available. So it's still running in the sandbox and doesn't run with full privileges, which is where the additional exploits come in that then lead to a sandbox escape and privilege escalation. Google split this out into multiple blog posts and went at quite a bit of detail in how these exploits work. I think it's great that they actually spend that much effort in releasing all the details because not only does this help you sort of you know, protect yourself, but it also shows that these attacks are real and are actually happening, even though they're more used in these uh, somewhat targeted attacks and not so much something that you run into every day. And talking about target attacks, sometimes target attacks are a little bit more obvious and actually often they sort of trickle down and become more commodity exploits. One exploit that certainly is becoming more and more common is what's often called the SIM card swapping exploit. Now, this is often not even a technical exploit as much as a social engineering exploit. What what this refers to is that an attacker is able to add essentially a second phone to a user's mobile phone account. Now, if you're using your mobile phone for two-factor authentication via SMS messages, that of course then turns out to be a problem in that the attacker will be able to receive these SMS messages and will be able to authenticate. Last week, this happened to Twitter's CEO and his Twitter account, ironically, was compromised using exactly this technique. Of course, Twitter has relied uh, for SMS and caller ID for authentication pretty much ever since the service started. So it's certainly an obvious target for this kind of attack. No great solution for this yet. Now, many phone companies do allow you to set up pins for your phone. Definitely do this uh, sort of a customer service pin. Not sure how well this works because what often happens here is that the attacker will find ways to convince a customer service representative to bypass these security mechanisms. 
Well, and that's it for today, a little bit shorter today. After all, it's also the labor holiday weekend in the United States. And uh, you probably heard about the big hurricane approaching now. As usual with these large disasters, if you see any related scams or malware or such, we always appreciate a heads up, so just pass it along. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.